In this video we're going to talk about three sets of numbers. The natural numbers, the integers, and the rational numbers. So we'll start with the natural numbers. Now they're actually known by another name. They're also known as the counting numbers. And there's a really good reason for that. So the natural numbers are basically the numbers such as 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Now when you look at it, these are the numbers we use to count things. Now there is some debate among mathematicians as to whether zero should be included as part of the natural numbers. For this lesson, I'm going to include zero as part of the natural numbers. You also notice that we have this symbol in here. It's kind of got like a double stroke here. This is the symbol we use for the natural numbers. We'll now move on to integers. In certain situations, the natural numbers are not enough. For example, when you measure temperature, we can use the natural numbers to measure quite a lot of temperatures, such as zero degrees, one degree, two degrees, and so on. But there comes a point where we need to measure negative temperatures. So we need negative numbers, such as negative one, negative two, and so on. The integers include the set of natural numbers, such as 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on, but it also includes negative numbers, such as negative 1, negative 2, and so on. The symbol we use for integers is the letter Z, once again with the double stroke. Now, eventually we get to a point where the set of integers is just not enough. We need more numbers. This brings us to the rational numbers. The rational numbers include the set of integers. They include numbers such as 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on, and also in the negative direction as well. But what about numbers that lie between these, such as the number 1.5, or maybe the fraction 2 thirds, which lies between the 0 and the 1? The set of rational numbers include the negative numbers as well as the positive numbers, but it also allows us to use decimals and fractions and percentages. Now, whenever you see these three sets of numbers, you'll quite often see them in a diagram which has kind of circles or ovals on it. So I'm going to show you this diagram now. We'll, we'll start with a circle, and inside of the circle, I'm going to put the symbol N which stands for my natural numbers. So if someone was to look at my diagram, I would like them to know what the natural numbers are. So I might put some examples of the natural numbers down, such as 1, 2, even 10, or, or 0. So we can see inside the circle we have just our positive numbers and our 0 here. We then want to extend our diagram to include integers. So I put this oval shape which encapsulates my natural numbers here, and I'm going to write Z for my integers. And I also want to put some examples of integers here, my negative numbers such as negative 1, negative 2, even negative 5 or, or negative 10. Now as I mentioned before, the integers are the negative numbers as well as the natural numbers. Now I don't have to write any of my natural numbers over here because the integers encapsulate the natural numbers. I now have another oval shape and this time I'm going to use the Q symbol. The Q symbol standing for my rational numbers. And in this oval I'm going to start putting things that are not whole numbers such as one half, uh, 0 0.36, even my percentages, such as 98%. By the way, 98% is not a whole number. That's actually the same as writing down 0 0.98. And when I look at this outer oval, which represents my rational numbers, I can see I have fractions, decimals, percentages. It even includes the integers, the negative numbers, as well as the natural numbers my positive whole numbers and my zero. Now when we want to define these sets of numbers, if I wanted to write a sentence to describe what natural numbers are, 
what integers are and what rational numbers are. What would we write? Well, for natural numbers, it's not too difficult. It's kind of like your positive whole numbers as well as your zero. The integers are also quite easy to describe. The integers are basically your whole numbers, including your negative numbers as well. The definition for rational numbers is actually quite complex, uh, but basically a rational number is a number that can be represented as a fraction. The proper definition for rational numbers is that rational numbers have to be in the form, or are in the form, A over B. So, so far it sounds simple. It just, it's basically saying that rational numbers have to be represented as a fraction. But it goes deeper than that. We then need to write that such that, such that A and B are elements of the set of integers. So what does that mean? Well, we're saying that Rational numbers have to be written as a fraction such that A and B can only be numbers taken from the integers. They can only be whole numbers. They can be 3 over 4 or even negatives, negative 2 over 3. They can't be decimals. So we can't have 2.1 over 3.8. We also have to write something else down here. We also need to mention that B cannot equal 0. Notice that B is the denominator. The denominator cannot be zero. Now this is not new. I'm sure we know you cannot divide by zero. Anyway, this is the formal definition of what a rational number is. And it's basically saying that a rational number is a fraction written in the form A over B, such that A and B have to be whole numbers, specifically from the set of integers, and that B cannot be zero. So once again, basically, a rational number is a fraction. Now, some of you might be looking at my set of rational numbers going, well, some of these don't look like fractions. For example, 0 0.36, that's actually a decimal. Yes, but it can be represented as a fraction. It can be represented as 36 over 100. Even 98% can be written as 98 over 100. The set of integers and natural numbers can also be represented as fractions. For example, negative 1 could be represented as negative 1 over 1. It's now a fraction. Uh, 2 can be represented as 2 over 1 or even 4 over 2 if you want. If you look at this large outer oval shape here, which represents the set of rational numbers, every single number that we can see in this diagram can be represented as a fraction somehow. To be more specific, a fraction in the form A over B, such that the A and the B are whole numbers, specifically from the set of integers, and B cannot be zero. Anyway, that concludes our video on rational numbers. Remember to read the description below for links to work booklets that relate to this video.